Remember what I was telling y'all about about, manage, about managing time? Uh, I, another another video I watched by that guy, the one that does the uh, trucking answers. I watched a video on him about about the, about the proper pre trip, about how you should log, log that pre trip. Yeah, back when they was doing paper logs, you know, paper logs. So it's 15, you can only show 15 minutes. You can't show like eight minutes or nine minutes or whatever. On a pre-trip, it's always 15 minutes. So when they changed over the ELDs, a lot of truck drivers, they still, still say you have to show 15 minutes on that pre-trip. Now no one's ever told me that. I was always told to show eight or nine minutes or whatever, something like that. And I was also told, I was also told that you always have to show more on a post trip than a pre trip. And, and because he said the same thing that somebody else told me too. Because when you do a post trip, you're basically waking up to the same truck that you went to sleep in the night before. So yeah, if you did a thorough post trip, you shouldn't spend too much time on that pre trip. Main things that you should check on that pre-trip. When I was in CDL school, the first thing, the way, the way they're teaching this in CDL school, when you do a pre-trip, the first thing, the first thing you do on a pre-trip, you get an overall view of the truck. Overall view. Make sure there's no. Ah, uh, fuck this motherfucker tight. Fuck. Make sure there's no fresh body damage. Make sure no one hits you in the middle of the night. Make sure there's no, no fresh body damage. And the guy also said on this video, can you do a pre-trip while you're walking back from the truck stop from getting your coffee? Getting your coffee or whatever you're doing, brushing your teeth. Yeah, he said it on the video. So let, so let me ask you this. Can you log, can you start your pre-trip then go inside the truck stop and get some coffee. Can you do that? I mean, if you know you coming right back out, if you know it's on, I mean, you don't want to spend too much time off your, off your 70, or off your 14 hour clock. Cause yes, it's gonna eat your 14, it's gonna eat your 70 up. But yeah, um, you don't want to, you don't want to start your pre-trip then go inside the truck stop for 30 minutes cause you're gonna waste your own time. But, can you go inside that truck stop, get your coffee, get your biscuit, whatever you're gonna get, and while you're walking back to that truck, you take a look at that truck, you look for, for any fresh body damage. Any fresh body damage, you wanna get an overall view. What up, drivers? New Core Steel Company. Wallingford, Connecticut. This ain't my first time coming. This is my second time. Last time I came here, guess what happened? I pull up. I get loaded. I get ready to pull out. I get back to the front. This guy tells me. He waves me through. He tells me to keep going. And I pulled up, you know, about to go in and get my paperwork. I was like, what's going on with this? The guy told me to keep going. So I kept going. About 30 minutes later, I get a phone call from my company. I answer the phone, you know, what the fuck? I gotta turn around and go get my paperwork. And I'm almost in New York City. delivers tomorrow, 8 o'clock in the morning. I don't even think I got enough hours to even make it at 8 o'clock in the morning. We'll figure that out after I get loaded. Drive this shipper. See, my appointment time ain't till 1 o'clock. But I'm 
pretty sure I can uh go ahead and get go ahead and get checked in and get loaded. Since I already been here, I already know. Put my damn safety stuff on before I even go to the office. Only thing I gotta do before I go in there. I gotta write down my bill of lading number. Let's get this bill of lading number. Let me go on in there and get this thing checked out. Bring that bill of lading. I always get the customer pickup number. I get that. Two, six. Man, sometimes you go to these places, man. Sometimes the bill of lading number don't work. Sometimes they want to get the customer pickup number. Three two five. Three, two, five two. Yeah, man. I always get. You gotta make sure you write everything down. That, that'll save you some time, so you don't gotta. You don't gotta. Uh, like this one, it got some more numbers on it, but I should be good with this. It got like three more different numbers. Richard Fence Company. That's where this one. Akron, Ohio. Anybody know where that's at? Oh, buddy. Getting a little close, ain't you? Richard Fritz in Akron, Ohio. That's the birthplace of LeBron James. The king, in other words. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this guy, man, but he, need, he needs to take it easy. Cause he's getting pretty close. All right, folks, let me go get checked in. What up, man? Got some good news, I got some bad news. It's starting to drizzle a little bit out here. The bad news is, it's starting to drizzle and it's a tarp load. Let me cut my truck off. Save on my idle time. But anyway, it's starting to drizzle and it's a tarp load. So I gotta be tarped in the rain. Now the good news, that was the bad news. Now the good news, guy just told me at the office he said it is a tarp load make sure it has to be tarped I said 10 4 guess what we're not allowed on the trailer on this property they're gonna tarp it for me <laughs> oh man hey and they and they also remember the last time I was here I let that they was about to give me a new sticker and I said oh it says 2019 up there if you, oh, you can't see it but uh they was like, yeah, you're the guy that, that had to turn around and come back and get the paperwork. Guess what? The guy that told me to keep going, uh, he's not here. I don't know where he's at. I don't know what happened with that. But anyway, yeah, man, I, had, I, got, all, I got all the way almost to New York City. Had to turn around and come back and get the damn paperwork because the guy told me to keep going when I got to the damn scale house. So, yeah, man, that's about my appointment time wasn't till 1.00. It's 11.47, so I figured I was going to be waiting in line, but it's all good because uh, it's all good, people. Because I went to Walmart this morning. I bought me some milk since I got my new refrigerator jumping. Bought me some milk, and I bought me some damn cereal, and I haven't had breakfast. So I'm about to eat some cereal. I also believe I'm picking up some slinkies here, too. We'll see how that goes. Check in later. Flat big game. You know some slinkies. And I'm on a tight schedule, so I ain't got time to really, oh shit, like the bust of my ass. I ain't got time to really show you everything, but all the straps already been through. Only thing I gotta do is tighten up these damn straps. You wanna know the proper technique? Maybe if I got another time to show you, I can show you. But it ain't gonna be today. So I'm on a tight schedule. And these guys gotta talk the load. So they're gonna have to stop what they're doing. I gotta let them know when I finish tightening the straps. They're gonna come talking. So yeah, I gotta I gotta move. But there you go. All the straps has already been thrown. Pretty much get the big picture. 
All right, I'm about to get back to work. Shit, man. I'm oh, for real. There we have it. Low complete. Now wait on these folks to come out and throw this tarp on. Oh, I tell y'all, man, ain't nothing like some damn serious. This guy, I take the core racks out, put everything back there on the back, the, the wood and the little little thing that he slides in or whatever. This, I left him on the back of the trailer. This motherfucker, this motherfucker, uh, he come back with the goddamn uh, front lid with the, with the slinkies on it. He just holding them up in the air, looking at me. I'm like, what the fuck, man? And I'm like, what? He like, because the Mexican guy, he's like, I'm like, goddamn, motherfucker. So I put him up there and shit. Contraption. A little contraption hooked up to the forklift. Pick the tarp up and spread it out. That shit took like five minutes. Now I gotta put my damn bunnies on. Couple more bites first. set up going on up here. Let's see what it's all about. Man, that camera look clear as hell. Do I keep going or what? Oh, hey, I better be careful at these way stations. <laughs> Shout out my boy Guilty. Hey, the lady had like she had an attitude that I even slowed down. She was like throwing her hands up, like keep going, I'm like damn. Why y'all got the why y'all got the damn signs that say flashing? If you don't want them 
motherfucker to stop. Jeez. Well, bad news for your boy. I knew it was coming sooner or later. I woke up this morning. I tried to leave out of the truck stop. My truck was giving me a warning saying, um, uh, clutch, clutch overheat, clutch overheated. And, um, what was saying? Something about the clutch was overheating. And my temperature light's been on for a long, since all morning. And I called, well, actually, I sent a, a Qualcomm message to uh, dispatch and told them about it. And they told me to keep trying to push it to the... I don't know if y'all can hear me because I'm at a wait station. It's a lot of traffic. So yeah, they told me to keep um, pushing it. And I tried to. But I just... I just got pulled into a wait station. Every truck had to come in. But, uh... They, um... They waved me through. Yeah, they waved me through the wait station when I came in. As soon as I came back out, like didn't even make it. Like you see, like there's the ramp. Like I was about to make it back onto the highway. The damn truck just cut off. So now I got to set up these triangles. First time doing it. Damn, this one's broke. Damn. This, this one right here is fucking broke. Maybe I can push this through. Maybe it might work. Yep. Maybe that might work. But your boy, your boy is out of action. For all you new drivers coming to Mountain, don't let this don't let this discourage you from coming to Melton just because I'm down right now. But hey man, shit happens. Shit happens, man. And you know what? I'm just worried. I'm just worried that uh I, I thought my truck was about to catch on fire, man. Cause man, I, I got to the end of the ramp. And, and it just started smoking. Like I could, I could actually, I could actually see smoke coming out of the vents. So, you know, I'm thinking maybe, I'm like, damn, I hope, I hope the truck don't catch on fire, you know, while I'm still in it. So yeah, let me get these set up. Cause I'm down. Get these triangles set up and luckily luckily this this happened at the weight station and not actually while i was out there on, on the side of the road and i've been trying i've been trying to get get them on the phone but uh nobody's answering the phone so now I can't I can't even send a Qualcomm message because I, I, I have no power at all inside the truck. I'm gonna go ahead and close this just in case it don't mess anything up. You know what? I'm gonna look, see if I see any damage to the battery or anything. First, I gotta take a picture. This should make a beautiful picture. Damn. On the side of the mountain. And the snow coming down heavy. Shaking my head.
Yeah, let me look. Yeah, man, that smoke was coming on that uh, passenger side. It was coming out of my vents. So I don't know, man. Bad day to start my morning. Let me see if I can try to get anybody on the phone again. I'll let y'all know what's going on a little later. I got no power in here, man. I wish y'all could smell through the camera. Cause you'll smell it. And I was like, man, like I don't have anything plugged up or nothing. Yeah, no power. Nothing. I'm I'm done. But yeah, man, don't let this discourage y'all from melting. Like I said, man, shit happens. I'm, they're gonna send somebody out to get me. They're gonna get it taken care of. And I'll be right back rolling. Flatbed game. Yeah, man. Hard out here for a pimp. Unfortunate situation that I had to break down. But like I said, man, what, what were the odds? 80, 80 West leaving out of Pennsylvania. You in mountains, man. So it was some good odds that, that this weight station. And this ain't even a uh ain't even like a real weight station. It's like one of the little mobile setups they got. And I, I, I came in, the lady told me to keep going. And um Soon as I got to the end, about to get back on the interstate, my truck started smoking. So you know, you see the movies and stuff, you see the, you see the, the engine smoking, like you gotta ah, hop out, got that run, the bitch about to blow up. So you, hey man, I ain't know what the fuck was going on. But yeah, but I'ma tell you what, man, I feel good about this situation though, because you know what? How people always say, if you got if you having an issue, they always tell you send a Qualcomm message. Instead of calling on the phone, they tell you to send a Qualcomm message. So this morning when I woke up, I was kind of blocked in at the truck at the truck stop. Like a, a truck pulled up while I was asleep, and you know, he had his trailer like going up, like on my right passenger side. Like he was basically in in the he came in backwards instead of coming in the same way everybody else did. So the back end of his trailer was um was kind of kind of in front of me. So so I tried to back out, you know try to get out on my own and, and I was backing out because I couldn't go forward because his his truck his trailer was right there so I tried to back out and go like around the other truck but I got to this point where it was like you know what I can't I can't back out so I had to get out go over there and knock on his window and was like uh hey man I can't get out you're gonna have to you're gonna have to move your truck and he was in a day he was in a day cab too so he was just he was just laid across the seat, taking a nap or whatever. Cause like, as soon as I knocked on his window, he just, um, he got up and left. Like he didn't even try to move his truck or nothing. He just left. So maybe he was just taking a quick little break and that's why he parked all crooked because he knew he wasn't gonna be there alone. But anyway, when I was doing that, I had got a uh, notification on my dash that was saying, uh, clutch, clutch temperature high, creep mode disabled. So what happened, that ain't the first time that's happened to me, but, but, Matter of fact, in the um the video I did with the uh cat tractors, it happened it happened when I was actually dropping my first tractor off in Raleigh. I was trying to back up and, and I guess cause I, I kept stopping and pulling up or whatever, the clutch got too high. But see, um I just I just sat there for a few minutes and let it cool off. And and what happens with that man, when you hit the gas, like you barely gotta tap that gas. Like you just tap it and the whole truck will just fucking jump like that. And I set my drive cam off three times this morning, just just in that situation. So I, I was pushing it, man, you know. So I sent the Qualcomm message. I was like, hey, I just set my drive cam off three times, but I didn't hit nothing. I'm like, my clutch temperature is too high or something. And uh, they, they messaged back, they was like send a macro 18. And I started not to send the macro 18, because like, like I said, I've dealt with this before. So I know that, you know, if you let the engine cool off, then it'll, it'll eventually straighten itself out. But uh, eventually, I guess, you know, it got to the point where that's that's not the case. Like, that, they, that that's that's an issue. I don't know if anybody else ever ran into that situation in their truck. Um, clutch temperature gets too high. And, and it happened to me one time before at a truck stop. I was trying to back in at a truck stop. It was a tight spot. And it happened then. Creek mode disabled. And every time you tap the gas, it just makes the truck jump. 
And so when I sent the macro message this morning, I, I, I a long message too, I explained myself. I'm like, look, it's only a matter of time before I hit somebody doing this, you know, because you can barely tap the gas and the whole truck will jump. So it's only a matter of time before I'm trying to back in somewhere and, and my trailer shoots out, hits another truck, maybe hit somebody walking by. So, um, yeah, but dispatch sent me a message back that was like, uh, if you, if you can, if you're able to push it towards your cosine, need to make the drop and keep going. And that's what I was doing. I'm only like a hundred miles away right now. I was almost there. So yeah, man, it's kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is because like I said, the problem needs to be fixed before it got to that point where I, I hit somebody. Then I got a uh, preventable accident on my record. So yeah, that's and, and then when I just talked to a, another dispatcher on the phone, they were like, yeah, we got your first message at uh, at like 4.45 in the morning. Yeah, because it was that early when I sent the message. So yeah, that's why I said I'm kind of happy that I did go about it the right way and send the messages in on the Qualcomm so they can know that yeah, this this was something that he that he documented before the issue got worse than it was so yeah make sure y'all do that man matter of fact i'm gonna take this opportunity right now let's see let's see my new buddy the formula on instagram said he's going to melton another guy chill the guy just messaged me on instagram asked me a question uh where's the other guy at man you just messaged me i, I didn't didn't even respond back yet yeah, man, sometimes I try to message back most people that comment or message me. But, you know, you got to understand, you know, hell, man, I can't I can't message while I'm driving. And then at nighttime, you know, I'm, I'm it's, it's busy and all this and that. Uh, Jay, Jay Buchanan, orientation coming up. What's up, man? Congratulations. Uh, Juan, Juan Lamad, say you want to drive a man, you were in the mountains. Hey, trust me when I say this, man. You do not want to be driving that manual in these mountains, man. It might seem fun driving a manual, but, man, I, I, I can drive a manual. I can drive it pretty good. But driving in these mountains and in, in this weather, I don't know if you know or not, man, but the weather is changing. Every year, weather gets worse, man. Global warming, that shit is real. Like, air is, the, the winters are getting colder, the summers are getting hotter. Man, if, if you got the opportunity to, to eat a slice of cheesecake with a spoon, Eat it with the spoon, cause you know when you eat it with the, when you eat it with the spoon, you just pull it all off the damn spoon. You eat it with a fork, you're gonna be trying to stick it in, you know, breaking the motherfucker up. Eat the motherfucker with a spoon, man. Ride these motherfucking mountains in an automatic. Use the Jake brake. Don't worry about that damn manual, man. It's life life is a lot easier in the manual, and a lot of people may disagree me disagree with me on that one, but in my opinion. Me driving this automatic is just a whole lot less stuff I got to worry about, man. Because these mountains ain't no joke, man. Instead of downshifting and upshifting, you know, I could just, I could put it on cruise and just just roll, man. Use my Jake if I have to. It's, it's easy. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, a lot, it's a lot of people, man. A lot of people that, 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 that uh, that be, that be commenting. But, you know, a lot of times I don't have time to get back with you. Right, right now, man, I'm uh, actually waiting on the tow truck to get here. That says 60 to 90 minutes before it gets here. And I got to go, actually, I got to go back there and go ahead and drop my trailer. Because in the state of Pennsylvania, you can't tow a tractor with a trailer on it. So they got, they going to have to pull my trailer and they're going to have to tow me. They already told me I'm going to be in a hotel tonight. So we'll see how that goes. I don't even know where I'm at. Mile marker 56. I, don't, I forgot what city he told me the Freightliner dealership was at. But yeah, man, I, I just got my truck. My truck was just in the shop last week in my uh, White World 2.5 video when I left out of El Paso. I don't know if I had actually put it on YouTube or not, but when I when I went to that um, Hard Rock uh, Cafe in Tulsa that, and I was at the Waffle House, my truck was in the shop. My truck was in the shop then. That's when I got my new refrigerator put in. Uh, they had to fix uh, a couple things on the back. Uh, my my uh, my air. Hey, matter of fact, you know you know it's so crazy, man. Because in one of my other matter of fact, in my in my El Paso video, when my airlines and I was like, when I disconnected from my trailer, and I was like, 
I couldn't hang my airlines up because one of one of the, the hooks was broke. They actually fixed that in in Tulsa too. But the thing, this is this is what I'm saying. You know, my truck was just in the inspection bay, and I assumed that they checked over everything to make sure every it wasn't spitting out any codes or whatever. So yeah, man, it's, this is today is Thursday. That was last Friday, so it hasn't even been a whole week since my truck was just in the shop, and now I'm broke down. So yeah, it's unfortunate. But like I said, do not let this discourage you and say, oh, he's having problems with this and that. Hey, man, it's that's that's life, man. Shit happens. Imagine if, if you were an owner-operator and, you know, this is money coming out of your pocket. You got to pay for that tow truck. You got to pay for whatever problem is wrong with your truck, you know. Hey, Melton's sending the tow truck to get me. They're about to put me in a hotel tonight. So, yeah, man, it is what it is. Shit happens. One of my other buddies that works for Melton, Jim, he just told me the other day he was broke down for four days out in California four days maybe, maybe i just might be broke down for today the maybe they'll have my truck fixed in the morning i hope so because i want to go ahead and, and get this load dropped off if i can if they fix it tonight and i leave back out in the morning drop it off you know i can get another load for the weekend deliver on monday you know i have a pretty good check coming in on my birthday which is next friday so yeah it is what it is man so i'm just gonna sit here and wait sit here and wait on this um tow truck to get here and we just gonna go from there yo I wanna show y'all something man it's the only communication I got with the outside world it's Melton Truck Lines Transflow app cause you see I got no power nothing man I'm, st I'm still on duty right now so I, I sent a message about getting my clock straightened out. They said uh, they'll fix that once the, once they get the truck back working. So your boy your boy clock is still running. So got a little shout out for my dog the formula, new Instagram buddy. Welcome 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 to the flatbed game, brother. I also want to give a shout out to Mr. Bobby Wells. Mr. Bobby Wells commented on my video about the landing gear question that I had about which way was high, which way was low. I've already dropped it. Thanks to Mr. Bobby, I saved about 10 minutes of my time of figuring out which one was high, which one was low. Bobby Wells to be exact. The uh, guy, the guy at uh, outside repair he asked me if I had an APU on my truck. I was like, nah, I don't have one. So then he was like, um, if you get if you get cold, he told me if I get cold to go to the scale house. I ain't no scale house over here. This a little mobile setup they got going on. But yeah, it ain't that bad. It's only about, it's about 30, about 35, 36 degrees. It's not that cold right here. Now, if I would've still been in Michigan where it was like negative 12, would have been a different story. But yep, yeah, I'm gonna sit here, drink me some, uh, well, I can't drink coffee because I got no power to make it, but I can eat some cereal that I got back there in the back. But other than that, we'll be all right. Flatbed game. Well, about to get rescued. Here we go, people. Two tow trucks, one for the trailer, one for the tractor. I had to hop in here and warm up, man. I ain't up about 12 degrees outside. Might not be too bad to some of you. But when you ain't got no power in your truck, you ain't got no power, you ain't got no heat. I'm a G though. I'm about to get back out and uh, see what's going on. Could have been worse. I could have been going down that mountain and lost power. Thank you to the state of Pennsylvania for having a random weight station set up. My 
My baby going to the shop. Is it time for the Kenworth yet? What y'all think? Put D in the Kenworth. I need y'all to start the petition, man. Man, I'm tired of that fucking freight line. Man. Oh yeah. The boy's freezing. I gotta hop in this damn truck. Thank you, Hovis Truck and Service Parts and Sales. Make sure we're gonna give them a shout out on YouTube as well. 